So hey guys, um, yeah, so another English video, I think for one or two people pretty interesting. Um, we, like a lot of people know, uh, we make our own manifolds, or actually uh, Gieselworks is making them from, for us, he's a good friend of mine, and uh, we're working for a long time already together, and we did some really cool engineering process on that uh, Intag manifolds, and uh, we yeah, started to investigate it because we saw all the time maxing out uh, power. We could not get more power uh, with more pressure. And um, then I, I saw some intake or plenums and, and, and uh, um, manifolds in the States. Some of them are really nice. I know there's one which is completely made out of billet, uh, which used Derek Rockwell. And uh, then we have our own one. Oh, we just saw it and it was pretty also pricey but then to get it over here it's much more pricey and then we thought okay we just change it um, and make our own one so actually what we have here uh, this is the one I think the video is already out for the V6 so you saw already the intake manifold from Gieselwax from from the V6 which is completely hand built uh, on this one because it's just a, a one-off single product uh, we are using the stock runners down here we grind them that they match finely and we were, or Leonard welded from Gieselwax, welded all the stuff on top of it. These are brand new intake manifolds which we are using. So actually we have a manifold for the 1.6 liter uh, NA and B. We have for the 2 liter 2.3 and 2.5 liter NC. And we have for the 1.8 liter uh, 1 uh, NA and B. A manifold. We have all the manifolds uh, with different flanges which means you can connect to an A and B, uh, 1.6 or 1.8. You can use the standard NA throttle, you can use the NB throttle, you can use the NC drive for wire throttle, or you can use the skunk throttle. It's just a drop down in the web shop and uh, Sebastian will just make a, uh, a shortcut that you can see it. So uh, why we did all the work to the intake manifolds uh, and why uh, we saw maxing out of power or whatever. So when we have a look at a complete OEM, this is a 99 spec intake manifold. Um, it's actually not working bad, so we can always see something around 350, 360 horses, and then we are just maxing out the intake manifold. This is not the best one, I think the better one is the one from 2001 to 2005, which is on the NBFL 1.8 liter VVT engine. But we also saw that these are maxing out at that power level. So I would probably say these ones are good to go to 330. You have to remove the VIX, uh, which is inside the manifold. And when you removed it, it, it flows okay. But you all the time see that your, your power gain is not refing to the end of the ref range. Um, what we will do when we have Daniela's car on the dyno, I will show you the difference between a standard manifold and this manifold. Because what I can tell you right away, when you are using, as example, on MX-5 and C or on a uh, MX-5 and A and B, uh, a standard intake manifold, the power graph will all the time go like this. So you will have a flat piece, something around 6,800 to 7,600 RPM. It depends on the speed of the dyno. When you really have a fast run on the dyno, you probably see it like this, but it will not be like this. You can also see it in your V tables, and I will talk about that in the video when we just map Daniela's car. You will see it. It just goes, it, it will flat out something around 6,800 RPM. So, we saw, okay, the first thing was, I was thinking about changing cams. We changed cams on the, on the, en or on the, on the engines, but actually we gained power, yeah. Uh, we also gained power on top of the RAV range, but it's, it was all the time like talky and then just flat back out and said, okay, that's, that's weird. And then uh, I talked about that to Leonard and he said, okay, just let build a, let's build the intake manifold. And what we did, uh, we made a first intake manifold just on standard runners. So we just cut it all. Yeah, uh, manifold and welded a plenum onto it and just did some basic things and we we started um, on the dyno and just looking for dyno graphs and, and see and actually 
in the first step, we just cut the OEM one and uh, welded this one or, like a blend on, on, to, on top of it. We just saw directly that the power is just getting linear to the top and I said, okay, perfect. You also lose a bit of torque, that's for sure, um, which means the, the spool will be also as early, but the torque will just hit in about 200 RPM later. But we just see power is going up to the ref range. And then I just uh, talked to Leonard and said, okay, probably you just have to change a bit this, the length of the runner. This is also a point which we checked that we uh, have a, a certain amount of lengths here. And we used some different runner lengths and uh, made the first plenum and also changed the, the, the part which is here, which is made longer or shorter. And we saw again in torque and also in power. And this is now at the end of the day our finished intake manifold. What I can tell you, there are plenty intake manifolds now on the market. There's a company, I think from Dynatronics, they I think they are selling that intake manifolds, but they are not so nicely hand built and um, we just saw some of them uh, for the NC. But uh, what we also saw and which was pretty important for us, I think Sebastian will show you some pictures, all our intake manifolds, this part here where the plenum is on top, um, you actually have uh, pipes and trumpets um, in, the, in the manifold so that the air comes really nice to it. But now we just talk about uh, power gains. So, like I mentioned, the, the power curve is just right, right straight to the top of the ref range. Um, but on our race cars, so you know Sven's car, you know Jürgen's car, you know um, uh, Jay-Z's car, all that cars we saw something around 440, 450 horses on the dyno and then it's, it's done, you could not even push more air into the engine, even on 2.2 or 2.3 bar of boost, you all the time were seeing it was maxing out. So. Um, we were investigating into that and I was thinking about just changing cams to change cams like I talked before. And then we just chopped the intake manifold onto it. And this was pretty funny because the first car which uh, we're using the intake manifold and after we did some testing on 350 horsepower cars uh, was Jürgen's car and we just gained for sure. And this is, is something you just listen to it carefully because otherwise you will say I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you shit or whatever. Um, we had 440 horsepower on two bar, a 2.1 bar of boost. Um, we turned up the boost to let's say 2.2 or 2.3 bar. We saw 456, and then we just swapped out the manifold and did not touch the map on the boost side. You have to touch the map on the fuel side, that for sure. But we just turned on altitude and just went on the dyno and we dynoed it and we just saw directly 500 horsepower. So what are even more I think 530. So actually you could say now that these intake manifolds they make you 50 horsepower but that's not um, that's not it because the point is when you are on 440 horsepower on a 1.8 liter BP engine you, you're starting maxing out OEM intake manifolds and this is like a, a flow formed intake manifold on that power levels you will gain 40 horsepower that for sure but on let's say a standard 1.6 with 150 horsepower and you just drop that intake manifold on top you can be happily when you see probably four horsepower or whatever. So this is something which really works when you have a lot of boost and a lot of power. So um, when somebody is asking me and say, hey Jan, when I have to swap out my intake, intake manifold to a different manifold, when does this make sense or when, when does this matter? Um, I would say all the time something around up from 330 horsepower you will have 25 or 30 horsepower gain um, or actually what we are doing when we have that intake manifolds there. If we have a customer who says okay I want to spend that 1500 euro or 1200 depends on which flange design you have or whatever um, and he says okay I want to have a gold power for 330 horsepower what we see that we are coming faster to the certain point of 330 horsepower on the ref range. So you can run more power with less boost and this is all the time you know when you let's say you want to gain 400 horsepower and you 
get 400 horsepower with less boost. It's all the time. Less boost means more reliability, less heat, more less stress to the engine, and all that stuff. And this is the point where we are uh, also going on 300 horsepower builds for a different intake manifold. Um, and it looks nicer. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, it, it, it looks nice in the engine, babe. But um, yeah, it looks nicer there for sure. But it's it's a functional part, and I would say when you are in the, in the 300 horsepower club, it makes starts making sense to use a different intake manifold. When you are in the 400 horsepower club, I'm for sure you have you should do it. When you are in the 500 horsepower club, definitely go for a different intake manifold. When somebody tells you something different, it's absolutely a lie because this will gain you up from this power levels in different percentage gauges, um, different power levels. So I would say something around 300 horsepower, you will see 20 horses, 400, you see something like 30. And when you're up in the 500, you will probably see 45 or 50 horsepower all the time compared to the OEM intake manifold. We never compare to a skunk or to a, a skunk or Blazaman, uh, I do already know, so there are some, some out of there. I never compared to that ones, I just be using old ones, and um, they're doing pretty well. So if you have any questions regarding the how to drop them into the engine, what do you have to modify to the engine or whatever, uh, we have m some certain stances we did. So we are now on um, Evolution 3, I think, on the NB, because there were some fitting issues, depends on which rail you were using. And um, uh, we are on, I think, EVO 4 on the NC. So um, there we did some uh, investigations to the parts. But if you have some questions about the manifolds, how they are built, how thick is the material, it's probably interesting for some of you guys. It's three millimeter um, aluminum. Uh, it's completely hand welded. Um, yeah, and you can just can get them customized to all the. Uh, throttle bodies which I mentioned we can do actually every throttle body which is on the market but we we try to think about okay what is easy because when we uh, order one flange it's let's say 300 euro or 250 I don't really know but when you order 10 it's about 150 or whatever so it's we just thought okay this is a these ones we are using a lot and yeah if you have any questions regarding how to fit them, what is included, what do I need, when does it make sense, is this a, a good solution or not, just give us a message, drop the questions below and I'm happy to help you and uh, talk about our solutions. See you in the next video. Bye.